Hi everyone, I'm Wyatt and welcome back to our FRC Java tutorial series. Today we'll be going more in-depth into the syntax we learned in the last episode, as well as learning about a new concept, the while loop. In order to demonstrate this, we're going to first start off by creating another new replic project, this time to represent an elevator. We'll start off like last time by making a new file named elevator.java and writing public class elevator, followed by a pair of curly brackets. But this time we're going to do something a little different before we make our first method. We're going to make our first instance variable. To do this, we'll write private int current floor. This will be an instance variable to represent the current floor this elevator is on. Next, we'll create a method to make the elevator go up to a new floor and print out each floor that it passes so that people riding the elevator know what floor the elevator is currently on. To do this, we'll write public void go up to floor. But this time in the parentheses, we'll write int new floor, followed by the curly brackets. But before we move on, let's pause for a moment and look back on the code we wrote. You'll notice each line of code we wrote has either public or private. These modifiers tell the code where each class, instance variable, or method can be read. Classes, instance variables, and methods with the public modifier can be read in any part of the code, including other classes, while code with the private modifier can only be read within the class. For example, we would be able to use elevator and go up to floor in this main class, but we would not be able to read from the current floor instance variable. As a general rule of thumb, We'll keep our classes and methods public, but our instance variables private. In this line of code, we declared a variable. In Java, we always have to declare every variable with a type. In this case, this current floor variable must be an integer. If, for example, we wanted to make it a string, we could just replace int with string. we only ever declare a variable once. Here, where we wrote void, we specified the return type of the method. In Java, every method has to specify a return type. If our method returns an integer, we would replace it with int, or with a string, we would replace it with string. But we can return any Java class, including the elevator class we just made. However, our method won't return anything but we still have to specify that it won't return anything by using the void return type. We'll talk more about what it means to return something from a method in a later video. Within the parentheses, we specify the parameters that are required for our method. Parameters are variables that are passed into a method. In our case, we require that an integer is passed into our method to represent the new floor for the elevator to go to. We can have as many parameters as we would like, as long as we separate them with commas. Now that we've gone through all that syntax, let's go ahead and make our first while loop. To make a while loop, we simply write, write while followed by parentheses. Within these parentheses, we write our condition. We want our loop to run while the current floor is less than the new floor. In this example, we used the less than comparison operator. The other comparison operators in Java are less than equals to, greater than or equals to, greater than, equals to, marked by two equal signs, and not equals to, exclam exclamation point followed by an equal sign. You'll also notice that I wrote this dot current floor. 
We use this to indicate that current floor is an instance variable of our elevator class. Every time this loop runs, we want to increase the current floor by one and then print the current floor to the terminal so that people riding the elevator can see what floor the elevator is passing. To increase the floor, we can write this.currentFloor equals this.currentFloor plus 1. However, to make our code even simpler, we could just write plus equals 1. This line of code has the same exact effect as the last line of code that we wrote, but it is much simpler. We can replace this 1 with any number, and this plus sign with any one of the four operators in Java. Minus for subtraction, asterisk for multiplication, and the slash for division. However, when we are only increasing our current floor by 1, or any integer variable in Java, we can make things even simpler by just writing plus plus, which has the same effect of, as all three of the previous lines of code we wrote. Finally, we print the current floor to the terminal. Now we can go into our main class and create a new elevator to run our code. Much like with the instance variable, we first have to declare our variable. In this case, we declare that e is a variable of type elevator. Then we can assign the variable e equals new elevator. We'll talk more about what that new keyword is doing in a later video. But for now, know that any class that we make in Java, we must preface it with the new keyword when we are making a new object. You don't need this new keyword for objects like integers or booleans. Finally, we can call our go up to floor method by writing e dot go up to floor nine. And we can give our code a run. And sure enough, it prints all the numbers 1 through 9. Lastly, I have one last challenge for you guys. Right now, our elevator only has a method to go up. If you'd like, you can pause the video, and in a couple of seconds, I'll show you a solution for how to make the elevator go down. But go ahead and try that on your own first. All right. So here's the solution for that go down to floor method if you want to compare it to your own solution. All right, that's all I have for today. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.